You smell that, Giovanna? Smell what? Love is in the air. Oh, right, because it's Valentine's Day. Exactly. And what says love more than giving a blind girl sight and sacrificing a goat? I'm sorry, what? I take it you're unaware of the origins of Valentine's Day. Very unaware. I know Cupid, I know candy and cards, but I've never heard of anyone being cured of blindness or sacrificing goats. Then, Giovanna, my friend, you are in for a sweet treat. For today, I will share with you the origins of Valentine's Day. The Valentine's Day we know today is about giving cards and gifts to the ones we love. But how it all got started is a bit more mysterious and kind of dark, actually. The roots are a mix of Christian and ancient Roman traditions, and there are a lot of stories with varying accounts on who Valentine's Day is named after. One story is about St. Valentine of Rome, going all the way back to the 3rd century in the Roman Empire. A guy named Claudius II was in charge, and he was not a fan of the Christians. Rome at the time was a pagan society, meaning they worshipped the earth and multiple gods. So, Christians were treated poorly and persecuted pretty aggressively. Valentine was caught helping Christians escape violent prisons in Rome, which was a big no-no, and for that, he was thrown in prison. While in prison, he befriended the jailer's blind daughter, and was said to have performed a miracle by restoring her sight. He was still killed, though making him a martyr, which means dying for one's religious beliefs. It's said that he left her a note that read, From your Valentine, which may sound familiar. Aw, that does sound quite romantic. Nope, we're not there yet. It only sounds romantic because we're conditioned to associate Valentines with romance. But first, there's more to tell, because there's another Valentine we need to talk about. All right, Oscar, let's hear it. So. Remember Claudius? Well, he decided that single men made better warriors and outlawed marriage for young men. The second Valentine was a priest who didn't think this was very fair, so he secretly performed weddings for young people in love. When Claudius found out, <laughs> Valentine number two was also made a martyr. Some people say these two Valentines were the same guy, but with so many stories and it being so long ago, it's hard to say for certain. Wow, that's some pretty bad luck for Valentines. Very bad luck. But they were heroes in the end for helping others, and that's how they became saints. Interesting. Now let's loop back to the sacrificing of the goat. Ah, yes. Well, that has to do with the pagan festival of Lupercalia. That took place thousands of years ago. Prepare yourself. It's pretty wild. Lupercalia was a fertility festival that was conducted by a Roman priests called Luperci. This occasion was celebrated on February 15th and was held in a sacred cave where the founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus, were believed to have been raised by a she-wolf or lupa. The luperci would sacrifice a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. They would then touch the women of Rome with the hides of these animals because it was meant to bring them fertility in the coming year. The women were then matched up with men through a lottery that would take place and sometimes these pairings would end in marriage. Later, when Christianity took hold, Pope Galatius I outlawed the festival because it was unchristian and replaced it with St. Valentine's Day. But the traditions as we know it didn't begin until much later. Around the 1500s in Europe, the formal Valentine's greeting really started to take place. By the mid-1700s, commercial greeting cards became a normal practice as a way for people to express their emotions to the ones they loved. The cards would often depict birds because mid-February is the beginning of the mating season for birds. And so, love birds became a popular symbol. Cupid is also depicted around the time because he was the Roman god of love and his arrows would wound people with love and passion. A very fitting mascot, I must say. In the 1800s, a lady named Esther Howland began making elaborate cards with lace, ribbon, and colorful pictures and became known as the Mother of the Valentine. Today, it's very common to give cards, flowers, and candy to celebrate the holiday. People spend big bucks around this time. In fact, Americans spend an average of $142 on the day. Nationwide, the total spent is over $25 billion. That's billions with a B. Valentine's Day has some very strange and murky roots, but
but what it is today has become a lovely and sometimes expensive way to show affection to the ones you love. Holy smokes, $25 billion? That's wild. But also not surprising because we do start seeing stuff for sale right after Christmas. Gotta love good old American capitalism. Maybe I'll send it a valentine. You're gonna send capitalism a valentine? I might. It beats celebrating. Sad. What's sad? Single Awareness Day. Oh, I guess that is sad. You can sign my card to capitalism. Thank you.